Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you managed to find this video by random, uh, my name is Brett Tamalock, or TN Artist here and just about everywhere else online. And this is part five of an Art Rage digital painting workshop focused on painting an Irish Shepherd, his dogs, uh, his dog, the sheep, and the surrounding countryside. So make sure you've watched parts one through four so you're all caught up. If you do want to paint along with me, which I hope you do, you can get the line drawing and brushes from my Gumroad page. The links and everything else are below. And while you're there, consider clicking on my Patreon link as well, because if you become a patron, that means you'll have hours more of digital painting lessons for only $3 a month, which really helps me with making more content. So, all right, cue the intro. Okay, so let's work on these guys here and get them kind of brought up and we'll start pulling some of this together for it to um, get towards the finished piece. So we might be able to finish it this go around. Um, we might not, so we'll just have to see. All right, so I want to paint in some of this coat. I'm going to go back to my good old impressionistic cloud brush and go with a gray let's see how that looks yeah all right so the light is like i said diffused so let's build it up along the edges and we'll go back and refine his edges kind of like we do on the the rocks that we did earlier and stuff so we'll go back and kind of change some of that but right now we just want to build up some lights and some darks that look like folds in the clothes and and you got to think about kind of how this drapes if you have a reference photo I recommend using it um, if you don't have one take a look on Google do a search for like coats and stuff like that just don't copy the uh, actual photos from there because those are going to be copyright protected Actually, I want to try this other one real quick. This one hesitates a little bit. I do like this one for the dry brush. It really does a good job. Gives a lot more like it would if I were using a um, old bristle brush. Okay. There we go. All right. See how that's burning out? We'll have to change colors. So just Control Z. Go down here and pick this lighter color use that and for this I'm going to kind of brush back up towards that color that kind of burnt out when we were doing this originally like so and go a little bit lighter but anyway what I was saying was about the uh, references is see what you can find to look at something like how it lays and stuff just don't copy it because again that's copyright infringement uh, if you've got one like this one where she said hey I want to see what you know can be painted from it then you're good to go uh, and there's there's websites out there that you can get copyright free images from uh, Pixabay is one of them and I'll have to look up the other one. Let me see real quick. So give me two seconds here. Let's see. Um. Oh, 
I'm trying to see if I can find it real quick, so sorry for the hesitation here, but, um... Uh, I think it's Unsplash is the name of it. I'm trying to confirm that real quick. Yeah, Unsplash. So U-N-S-P-L-A-S-H dot com and Pixabay, so P-I-X-A-B-A-Y. Those are some good places to get royalty-free images. And just check, I mean, some of them on Pixabay, they're all that way. On Unsplash, I think that they all are that way. I've not used Unsplash a whole lot, but um, just double check. They'll, they'll say what their uh, use is, if it's free without attribution, if it's, um, or what, so. Just something to pay attention to. Now one thing with this brush, it's a little too soft, so I'm going to have to go back and clean some of these up. And by too soft it means it like makes it blurry on the edges, and I don't want that. So I'll have to go in and kind of fix that. Okay. So let's grab a different one. Actually, let's look at pencil. Kind of come down and tighten up these edges a little bit. Let's see how that tightens up that look. That hard tip is good for that. So really just kind of think about how these are going in. In the original picture that I'm looking at, he's wearing jeans, but I don't want jeans. I want this to be a little bit older looking. So that's why I'm trying to go with like something like these brown pants, like they're just old work pants or something. I switched to the chalk brush because I want a little bit more, um, a little bit wider. I'm put this little highlight coming down through here. There we go. There we go. And I think that's going to work. So let me just a little bit pull some of this together. darker color just so I can add some final shadows down here kind of indicate <coughs> excuse me where his boot heels are
And a little bit into here. There we go. So let's send that out. Yeah, I think that works. So let's work on his coat next. Kind of start pulling some of that together. And this chalk brush works really good. I'm trying really hard not to hum while I'm doing this because in my ear I have uh, Irish music going just to kind of set the mood for doing this. But it switched to a, she, a sea shanty, <laughs> so it's, it's really hard not to sing along with it while it's going on. Um, Alright, so trying again with the chalk brush you can change the pressure and it'll go a little bit lighter and give you uh, the ability to blend a little more. And this is what I constantly say about, you know, I've got my brushes that I sell um, and that I have on Gumroad. And you don't have to have those. Um, you can use a lot of what's already in Art Rage. It's just a matter of getting used to them. But the reason, again, the reason I made my brushes was because they're just time savers. I want a certain effect. Instead of taking the time to build that effect up, I want it to just pretty much be right there. So I've switched to a darker, almost black color here because I need to get some of these shadows pulled in but you can again you can use what is with art rage it's a very robust engine for that and so um, don't feel that you have to get those brushes okay I, I mean i appreciate it when people buy them because it helps support the channel it helps support me it helps uh stuff kind of keep going forward you know and but it's not an absolute necessity. Okay, so I've kind of got that, so I'm going to switch to my pencil and tighten up some of these edges. can also switch the smooth transparent one can give you a nice blend because it is so subtle so if you want that kind of clean kind of got some of that so let's tighten up and these are what are called silver edges so kind of like you hear about the silver edge of a cloud that's kind of the same thing you don't want these to be necessarily one solid line but you want it to kind of catch the edge of these and I find that if I do a little bit then pick it up go a little bit further pick it up I get a much nicer look. But even though this is a dark coat, and you know, it might even be like a navy blue or old faded black. You can see now why I didn't just go to black, um, because I get those nice variations of colors. All 
Alright. that kind of in there so I need to do his hair okay so these are just some simple lines coming down just scribbling up and down really And the nice thing about this is, you don't have to paint this guy's face. <laughs> okay. Let's go back to this acrylic dry brush. Brush this in. I'm actually going to go above so it'll smear <coughs> like so. And so we've kind of got that done. Let's go. I'm going to go below this guy. I'm going to do a little bit on this. There we go. Now then I can come back to here and grab this color and go a little bit over towards here and back to the pencil. And this is pretty much like doing the um, posts. So it's just kind of an up and down loose stroke. And again, let's tighten up this. So that kind of fits there. And you could spend time on this, but again, we're just trying to give the impression of his hand being there. And it was funny, I went into a uh, art exhibit at the Frist in Nashville and seeing some of the these really detailed looking paintings but when you zoomed in on them and kind of got close and looked at them like they would have these hands and all this stuff and you'd be like, wow, the detail, and you get in and look and they, their hand is just a big blob too. <laughs> so, and it's just because they weren't focused on trying, that wasn't the importance part of the painting. So, but now we've got this guy in here, and he's looking pretty good. So, control alt down arrow, control alt down arrow. We've got all that merged together. <coughs> Excuse me. And that kind of pulls him together. And we can tighten him up a little bit more. But I think for what we've got for now, that's going to work. So we can go on to the dogs. Onto the dog and the sheep. Okay, I'm going to make a layer above them. And I'm going to do uh, some of the sheep next. Get this doggo kind of done up a little bit. Alright, so that's going to be a little too rough. Let me try. So we need to put some black in here for his fur. 
and very similar to what we were just doing with the coat you know we're trying to just shape it and just kind of keep laying some of this in here there we go and kind of sharpen up his ears like so and again this is one of those things you can spend more time on it if you're doing yours depending on how realistic you want to get it. Um, but I, again, like the impressionistic look of it. I want some of his shaggy fur hanging down. So the main thing with this is think about how the fur would be flowing and try to compensate and follow that. And that's what's going to give him volume, like so. So I went to a little bit warmer because I want to have some highlights here and the light even though it's diffused is still going to have a little bit of yellow in it like so so we just want to grab some of that highlight So, so now we've got a little bit more of a collie look, or herding dog, I don't know what kind of dog these are called. I'm that big of a dog guy. I love dogs. Not good with the breeds. Oops. Control Z can be your friend. If you were doing it in acrylic, you would just go back and wipe that off. Same with the oil. I'll put a little bit of brown. Maybe above it because it's burning out. Because these guys have a little bit of brown. So let's zoom out a little bit. I think that's given us some of the look that we want. We'll control out down. Oops. Out down. There we go. He maybe should be a bit bigger now that I look at him. So let's just select him. And then shift control alt T. Control D. One of the things I love about digital stuff, I don't have to repaint that entire thing. And a little bit of a sharp edge here, so K for my palette knife. And just kind of soften that. Right. So, speaking of soft, he looks blurry because we've got all these soft edges. So, back to the pencil and tighten up some of those edges there 
and grab and all I'm doing is going along these edges and getting rid of some of the uh, softness This is kind of tightening him up a little bit for the look. Kind of pulls him together a little bit more. to this orange color. Just adding in some shadows here real quick. So just kind of settling them into it. Alright, so that kind of gives us the dog and the man. So now we'll focus on the sheep. But I'm going to go ahead and save this and then come back for the next one.